Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm A.J. Monty, and this is a one-year daily candle chart of DIA, which is the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF. And as I zoom in here, you'll see that I've left my lines on the chart so you can see how the forecast is working out. And what we have is a forecast that's half done, more or less. I said that I was expecting the market to break out over those highs, I still think that will happen for the diamonds, but as you will see with the other markets, I'm not quite as bullish with some of those. So we'll take this one step at a time. First of which, we have this resistance area right here that is taken from the high right there on March 18th. And we went up to that resistance on Monday, came back down, didn't fall back too far, but today... As I zoom in there with the magnifying glass, you'll see that that is very close to a hammer. But hammers are usually found at the bottom of down legs. So the point that I'm making here is that we have a small body candle on higher volume and the oscillators are still trying to go up. Now, what does that mean? It means the buyers are still in force. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase that and move it on over. And, and then show you where my price target is. I don't think we're going to go crazy and rally through the roof, but I do think it's going to try to rally up over that resistance. So next week, I'm putting a price target on the diamonds for 334.86. So keep an eye on that. At this point, if you're trading the diamonds or you have any Dow stocks, you want to be trailing your stops up right under the 20-period moving average. What is that? Well, that's the blue line. So you could see that the moving average held as support. So as the market goes up, this moving average will drift up as well. So placing your stop loss orders below that support level or moving average is going to help you preserve your cash should the markets reverse and go lower. So I'm really stepping up on my soapbox for managing risk and hoping that more and more people are doing a good job watching out for the downside. Okay, so that's for the diamonds. Now, if we look at the IWM, this is the Russell 2000 ETF. I said that we would most likely go up. And then I also said, I don't think that we will go higher than that high. And look what's happening. We are moving right along in that same angle as my forecast. But I do think that we're going to wind up right at that target. So I'm going to keep that exactly the way it is. I think we could go up just a little bit more, but then it'll start to pull back right in this area. Now, interestingly enough, some of you who are studying price patterns may have already picked this one up, but notice what's happening here. We have a head and shoulders pattern in the making right now. Now, whether or not the market pulls back like that, we won't know for at least another one or two weeks. But this would be a left shoulder. This would be classified as the head of the pattern. And then the right shoulder, should it start turning back down, would complete the pattern. But the breakout is the neckline. What does the breakout mean? Well, that's what we got to watch out for on the downside because I'm going to just put NL for neckline there. If the market breaks out below that neckline, then we could go all the way down here and that's being conservative because when you're measuring a, a move on a breakout pattern for head and shoulders, you take the length from the neck to the head and you simply move that downward to the breakout point and beyond. And that is what we could expect if this pattern holds in place and eventually breaks the neckline. So again, risk management is most definitely needed. And again, that's IWM. If we look at the spiders, we came closer to hitting my targets this week on the spiders. And right there, you'll see there's the spider chart. We did break out of the highs, like I said we would. Didn't quite reach that just yet. But I'm thinking I may have to lower that target a bit. You know, for those of you that are in the S&P, you're making money on the highs, obviously the new highs today. But keep an eye on what's happening down below because we have a long stretch of green candles known as a stale green light. 
we have six green candles in a row right there. And if you look back in the past, we don't like going more than five or six. So I'm expecting this one to pull back almost immediately next week. So my forecast is going to be lower for that market, for S&P. And so I'm going to erase that line right there. And I'm going to just draw it right down. Now, where am I going to draw and stop? Right here. Look, I'm moving it to the right, but I'm tracing from the left. You see this angle here? That's how I get my angles. If you look back, the market tends to drop in similar angles. So I'm be even being conservative there. My price target for S&P is to the downside 393.97. And I think it will most likely find support right there. I do not believe that this role reversal is going to hold. I do think it's going to drop right away and then pull right back to that moving average. It seems to be a rhythm or a cycle for that market right now. Now let's go right to the VIX. The VIX, I'm still keeping my high price target on that. Why? Well, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this one before I go to the Qs. And this is why. Back in March, of 2020 i had an open house conference call i'll do my best to post the link in the description box below so you can hear what was said back then and the call was done on march 23rd now look at this, this is a weekly chart it was done on the monday of this week right here at the beginning of the week right at the high here right there right at that mark right there as i magnify that the call was done and I was talking to folks about being proactive because remember, when the VIX is so far overextended, the markets become more bullish, right? Remember, it's inversely related. So I was expecting the VIX to pull back and the markets to rally. And that's exactly what happened. You, m many of you think I just call tops, but I don't. I call the bottoms too. And on that day, on Monday, March 23rd, it was a fantastic day. Almost everyone who was on that call made a lot of money because we were talking about the being proactive and thinking ahead as critical thinkers of what would people be doing with their time and money while locked up in quarantine. Oh, well, they'd be watching movies. as Netflix. They'd be ordering online. Well, as Amazon. They'd be ordering pizza because they don't want to cook, right? And, and that's what we were looking at. And so at that point, there was a lot of money to be made when the indicators started turning down. Now, to shorten the story a bit, I highlighted this gap. And you'll hear this on the recording. I put my neck on the line, but today I was redeemed when I said that 100% of the gaps that are formed on the VIX fill. 100%. Why is that? Because it's an oscillating index. Now, I told everyone that I didn't think that was going to happen right away, and I really didn't know when it was going to happen, but I said I'd be willing to put my reputation on the line, and I guaranteed everyone 100% that that gap would eventually fill. Well, guess what happened? Today it filled right there. Now, here's part two of gap fill strategies, and I'm going to go back to my daily chart. Once a gap fills, and that's what that red line represents, once the gap fills there's now a 100% chance it will reverse. 100% chance, again, because it's an oscillating index. And you'll see, sometimes it does it right away, sometimes it takes a little time. Look, there was a gap down back there. What happened? It filled. What happened? Immediately, it dropped. It went the other way. You see that? Here was a gap, a gap up, and it went down. When it filled... What? Two days later, it reversed. Boom. You see that? So this is what we're looking forward to in the VIX. Now, VIX going up is not a very happy story for anyone who's long. Remember that. It's inversely related. I'm not changing my target on that. Even if all the trolls out there say, oh, he's wrong on the VIX. I don't care. Look how many times we're right. I'm right more times than I'm wrong. And the VIX is right more times than anything because it's an oscillating index. So I'm just going to duplicate that drawing. And what am I going to do? Just move it on over just like that. I'm leaving it right in place. I'm even going so far just to leave this little area right here because I think that's the end target right there. So now that I moved it over, I'm simply going to remove that drawing, leave that in place. Now let's go to the cues. The Q's is the only one that really didn't follow suit here 
We thought that the cues would pull back. But guess what? I'm going to do the same thing with the cues. I'm going to move that on over. Why? Because look what happened with the cues. I have to get my little drawing pencil out there for you. We hit the high from back here. See that? That's a resistance high. We also have a long stretch of green candles. Remember that stale green light. What's the most we had over time? Right there, back here. We had maybe eight green. We're up at six right now. And as soon as that volume starts dropping, we're going to see the price start to drop because the drop in volume is telling us that the buyers are becoming less motivated. Now look at the stochastics down here. This is really interesting. You see on this high right here, I'll draw a little arrow for you right there. That high coincides with this high on the stochastics. Notice the highs are matching, but not so far with the stochastics. We have a negative divergence on the stochastics. That's taken as a big sell signal. It weighs more on the bearish side than the bullish side. So you have to be really careful with that. So again, I'm simply duplicating this line and I'm going to just shift it on over right here. I'll even start it higher and make it longer. I'm going to say just like that and drop it. Now, I do believe that this whole area down here will act as a support, but there's a lot going on. If you're following my trading checklist, maybe I could even put a link to that as well in the description box. Gaps fill 80% of the time on equities. So we got two gaps now below the market that will act as price magnets. We got a resistance area, stale green light, oscillators overbought, negative divergence on the stochastics. And finally, boom, there we go. This came out today through WolfStreet.com via Zero Hedge. Folks, if you're not paying attention to inflation and what that can do to interest rates and what that in turn can do to our markets, then I would have to say wake up because this is a serious matter. They pass another $2.25 trillion bill and start spending more money. Well, now toilet paper is worth more than the dollar and the dollar is falling already. I just got off a phone call with some of our students and I was showing them that support for the dollar has already broken. But guess what? Role reversal takes place in the dollar as well. Once support is broken, if the dollar makes or manages to get up to former support, which is now resistance, then we're looking at another leg lower on the dollar. And this could actually be very disastrous. And I'm not, I'm not overemphasizing this. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not embellishing. This is a serious matter, folks. And that's why I'm trying to get people to pay attention to that risk management because if they pay attention to risk management, you're preserving your cash, you're protecting your profits, and you're creating opportunity for yourself on the way down. Once the market does find a support level, you'll be cash ready, loaded with buying power, ready to strike right back into the market. So with that said, make sure you check the description box. Please like and share. You're helping so many people when you do that. It also builds the algorithm to make it easier to find on the search engines. And with your help, we can actually create a movement here in the market, giving the average day investor and trader a leg up and an advantage over the institutions. And that's my goal. So have a great Easter. Happy Passover for those who are celebrating the rest of the holiday. And we'll talk to you next week. So long.